this evening, June 4th. Everyone in attendance, oh, except for Dan Gogenauer, so he's off the list tonight. Um, we'll call the meeting at 7 o'clock. He's off the list. Uh, I enter now a motion to adopt minutes of uh, May 21st. 21st. I so move. Uh, uh, second uh, well, you, you can't second because okay. you weren't there. No, uh, so I'll second that. And make any further discussion about adopting those minutes? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Uh, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Okay, now I entertain a motion to pay counts. Yeah, counts in the amount of $24,374,076. dollars 96 <coughs> That's a big one. I, I wasn't there. <laughs> I didn't see you. You weren't there to spend the money. Uh, okay. I, I so move. Wait a minute. It's not moving time. <laughs> Broken down general fund $97,25.49. Fire fund $13,627.19. Cemetery fund $4,303.05. EMS billing $5,024.93, road bridge $2,096.30, capital project fund is zero. Uh, is there a motion? I so move. Is there a second? I'll second that. The motion is second for the discussion regarding payments of those accounts. I, 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 I would like, just like sure. to comment that as we vote on this, we also have had reference to a spreadsheet that shows its reference, its relationship to the budget and all that, just for the purpose of anyone who's watching the video. It's not just that we're voting on the bills. <laughs> the, you mean we have these reports? Yes. We have these, yes. Every meeting we have these reports. Yes. They are reflected in the correspondence. I am saying that. Okay. Well, when we get the correspondence, I'll give you the floor. <laughs> You asked for their comments, and I just made it. <laughs> okay, you're, you're making comments about correspondence. Good. <clears throat> Any other comments about either paying the bills or correspondence? <laughs> well, I have some when we get to correspondence, but we'll wait for that. Yeah. So, may we vote please on the paper? Sure. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. All righty. Correspondence this period. We have, uh, I don't know if it's monthly or not, but the Community Solutions News regarding third graders at Agraria and Indigenous Knowledge. We have an uh, email from uh, a local resident uh, wanting to know whether we may have anything that uh, four, Eagles, four Eagle projects. Uh, in the next one or three years, and I haven't. I asked about a, a number that I can speak to them about, and I haven't heard back yet. But that might be interesting. That might be. That was for a three years a project. Uh, the next one to three years. Oh, just a project they could do in that time period. Are we talking about scouts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. Boy Scouts, local Boy Scouts 78. Mm -hmm. uh, wonder if the for cemetery needed any research or record keeping. <laughs> a little bit late, to our folks. But uh, I actually. I don't know, were you here, Don, uh, when was it, a year ago? We had, a, we had an Eagle Scout doing a project and doing some updating, taking some pictures of tombstones and putting them on the website um, for a part of this project. Or you thought it was a high school or one of the community um, service no, hours? It was a, it was a Eagle Scout thing, yeah. And uh, unfortunately, his family moved away before he could really complete it. Uh, he took a lot of pictures and, and left us the files, which I've, I've updated or uploaded into the subject <laughs> software. But he personally didn't do more than about 20 or 30 of them. Well, that would be a good thing to continue. Very possibly. Mm -hmm. Very possibly. So that's the thought. Um, I would. Uh, I'd like to pick up on that. Okay. I think it also sort of possibly overlaps with the Explorer post, in spirit at least. Sure. Mm -hmm. Or Scouts BSA. Scouts, right. Mm -hmm. Scouts BSA. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I also have a uh, uh, meeting packet announcement from Karen Winter about the ESS ECS meeting. 
ESC meeting on June 6th. I don't know, Mark, you... Did I forget that? I don't know. Mark, you were going to attend that or not. Um, uh, we have uh, an announcement from the Green County Township Association um, that there will be a meeting on June 12th, uh, 6.30 at the Indian Mound in Centerville, or in Cedarville. It will be hosted by the Green County Parks and Recreations. Uh, so it's next Tuesday. We have the uh, normal Ohio Township Association legislative alert uh, discussing all things pending in the, in the uh, legislature related to touches. Um, we have some back and forths about the pre bid uh, meeting that was held last week, uh, last Tuesday. Uh, from Dan Montgomery, who included the minutes. It is pre bid on the Firehouse Township Hall. Mm -hmm. Yep. We will explore that a little more in the new Firehouse report coming up. Um, along with a brief email from Ashley Kelly. And I have an additional piece of correspondence that uh, came in just hot off the presses that we might go over also about regarding the new firehouse. Uh, we have a Thompson Land Trust uh, newsletter with our ex First Lady Oak Tats smiling face in front of the Little Miami River. We have the uh, Board of Health uh, minutes from their most recent meeting that that are out March 1st. It's not their most recent meeting, but it's the one we've got. We have an invitation to attend a, a public meeting to unveil the final plans for the future of Dayton's riverfronts from NBRPC. Um, we have a, uh, a board mail out for Thursday's meeting of NBRPC. Pretty exciting stuff. MPO items, information items, Greater Regional Mobility in Initiative, Long, long, long Range Transportation Planning website updates, uh, track uh, council permissive license fees, uh, ARP age friendly communities, um, by somebody who I'm not familiar with. So that will be interesting to see. We have a uh, risk management of TARMA update. Uh, I think it's a uh, quarterly newsletter. And we have the Green County Council on Aging quarterly, <coughs> or I guess it's bi monthly uh, newsletter. And, uh, Mark or Dan, do you have any additional correspondence? No? I have one additional, as I said, from Dan Montgomery, which we'll probably go over in the Firehouse Report also. So, other than that, that's it. So, we'll move brief, or quickly into the uh, fire department report. See? Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Since our last uh, meeting, oh, please. last two weeks, we've had 44 EMS calls. Ooh, that's a lot. Yeah. I think Nate had 12 or 13 and it's like stuff like that. Is that right? Yeah. One day? Yeah, 24 hours. That's definitely wasn't very high. <laughs> but 44 EMS, uh, 11 fire, we've done four fire safety inspections. We do volunteer for appointment. Young Casey Brewer, who has been with our Explorer Post since forever. Forever. <laughs> the second he turned 14, he was here. Mm -hmm. He's now turned 18. <laughs> that would be four years. And wants mm -hmm. to be uh, wants to be in the fire department. So uh, there's a resolution there, which actually I think I hopefully put the right number on there, Margaret. I believe you did. 2018, 23. Yes. To appoint young Mr. Research. Brewer to the as a volunteer in the fire department. You want to consider that now or at the end of the report? No time like the present. I move. Uh, the the uh, adoption of resolution 2018-23 regarding appointment of MTFR volunteer personnel. Casey Brewer. And I will second. There's a motion and a second for the discussion regarding that resolution. 
Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Beecher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Thank you. Uh, on the volunteer front, um, so I guess the, uh, the funds we expended with our uh, recruiting campaign did do well. You know, we appointed four guys you know, two meetings ago, mm -hmm. and Mr. Brewer, and I had nine applications. Oh. Um, we cannot take them all because I just can't afford to outfit them all, but why the lag? Do you have any sense? The lag? Well, they didn't, they didn't immediately come forward. Oh, we've had some of these applications. We've had them for about a month. Okay. Um, we've had a lot of issues getting in touch with people's uh, references. That's great. Okay. That is great. No. We've had some phone numbers that are not correct. <laughs> Things like that. How many are from in town? Yeah. One. How many are trained? Uh, a few. Is that right? Yeah. There's, uh, we do have one young man. He's got to be interviewed still, but he lives just over the border in the Bath Township. Mm -hmm. He's an EMT, so that's wonderful. Um, the rest of the pack, I think we've got three or four firefighters in there. We don't have to... Tr oh, we do have firefighters in there. There's a couple firefighters in there, yeah. So we would have to outfit them. But the other ones, yeah. the untrained people, couldn't we train them before mm -hmm. outfitting them? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Colin, how, how many fire departments in the area have volunteers? Um, in, in Greene County? Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so there are lots of opportunities, so to speak. Um, people generally go to a place that's closest? They typically go to where it's closest, and there are a lot of opportunities, but not a lot of interest. That's the problem. I'm just curious. You know, if someone from Bath Township comes to us, well, Fairborn doesn't have volunteers, Correct. so they can't. Right. But did they have a choice of, you know, some other places that picked Yellow Springs or, well, or Spring the, Valley or? Yeah, I mean, I think they people come to us because of the existing volunteer fire departments. We have the largest run volume. Okay. So gives people an opportunity to do. So something. you're going to get some action, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, for the most part, because a lot of the departments. I'm even thinking of in Clark County, or Mad River. They still have volunteers technically, but they don't really have the program. Mm -hmm. Springfield Township has them, but their EMS is all paid, so I mean, there's a lot of. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but I also so, think so. that uh, reputation plays a uh, part of it. Uh, I really think so, yeah. yeah that's, you have a good reputation. That's yeah. what I was getting at. That yeah, we definitely do. So We have some things to offer. Uh, mm -hmm. So hopefully, we'll have some more volunteers for appointment next meeting and we get some of these uh, applications processed and they'll be scheduled. Um, and then we'll probably open up another volunteer recruiting period sometime in the fall and see if we can get people, some local people which would be nice. Like, people yeah. can't say they don't know, 2,900 cars will have to every address in the township. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It takes eight cars to get noticed. Well, I mean, we're, we also suffer in the community that Everyone, their uncle volunteers for something. Um, I mean, usually like three hours a month, but that takes all the time. So, yeah, you know, a lot of people don't want to volunteer for something that's going to take thirty to forty hours per month at their time. So that's a pretty big commitment. So, yeah. Um, uh, project updates. Uh, we hope to have the, uh, the new Lucas CPR assist device uh, purchased and delivered within the next couple weeks. Uh, we received the for the association. Receive a donation from the 100 women of Green County making a difference. Um, and then we plan to purchase a second unit, the, uh, the BWC safety grant that we received for the power cot. You can get $40,000. Well, it's a $40,000 grant. The power cot was only approved for 20, whatever it was, I can't remember that number, 27 or something like that, because that's what their formula says. So we have money left over. So Alex is going to work on. Use the balance. They will purchase these CPR devices with it, so you can put the balance for that. Be great. Yeah. Um, and then the new power cop for Medic 81, um, which we purchased with the BWC grant. Um, we haven't got the invoice yet because we'll have to cough up some money at the NS building, but um, it's scheduled to go up to Van Wert on the 13th for its install. So hopefully it's only going to be done for a couple days. Is what so, it's broad ambulance is where it's going. So it's, 
Mm -hmm. Lucky's <laughs> Lucky's Jap Jap. Right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, as you all know, I'm sure Street Fair is a Saturday. So it's supposed to be uh, latest. I just saw mostly sunny, 88. Uh, sure, we'll be busy. Just your kind of weather. My kind of weather. Uh, and then that, that that fancy firefighters association of ours, they they held a, an election. Um, so they have a new slate of officers. Uh, Brett Houseman is president, replacing, replacing Bob Cooper. He did not run again. Uh, Nicola Jacobson is vice president, replacing Brett. Was that for lack of nomination or or interest? Um, Bob is moving out of the country, so. Let's see. Uh, he's going back to Australia. The law has caught up with him, so he's fleeing the country. <laughs> uh, yes. So. Oh, they are the whole family. Sometimes? Yes. They're not sure when, but sometimes soon. So, hmm. uh, so Jeremy's going to stay on as treasurer, and Ted um, is taking over as secretary. So Bob and Ed didn't run for office. Okay. Okay. Bob, for reasons well known. And <laughs> but it was a very uh, banana republic esque I don't like as there's only one name for each position, but you know, you got the sash and everything like that. Well, so <laughs> the junta is in place. Uh, and that's that was all I had. That's how most military organizations yeah, much. positions are. Uh, yeah, they're lucky they have elections. Yeah, exactly. I've been president for life of the Green County Fire Chiefs Council. <laughs> Because <laughs> I missed the meeting. I will teach you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right. That's all I got. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions for the chief? Mr. Tudray? No. Okay. <laughs> well, let's move to the new firehouse report. Um, things are churning. At their uh, breakneck speed, as usual. I guess working backwards, the most recent bit of information is there was an addendum sent out this afternoon to the whole project. Um, and exactly how that worked, uh, I'm not 100 percent sure, but apparently the addendum goes to the to the site where um, all the contractors go to get their information about. The project, you know, after they read it in the paper, then they go to this this Arc something website, Arc Arc Document Solutions in Dayton, where they pick up all the drawings and the bid specifications and everything. And so the addendum to that apparently went out to them, and this addendum is just a riot. The only Things basically in English of the six pages is the part that says the bid date has been changed to Thursday, June 21st. As you recall, that the original bid date was uh, Monday the of that week, yeah. and they had some pushback on that. MSA had some pushback yeah. on that date, asking Mondays are bad. Or yeah, Mondays are bad because all the, everybody's hungover or they're not at work that day or something, and so they wanted a couple of extra days. Well, at that meeting, Dan said. Well, we, you know, we sort of thought people would do it on Friday, and this would be a pickup afterwards. But that's not people's reaction. Pesky <laughs> contractors. So anyway, it's been changed to Thursday the 21st at noon. Uh, they are due here. Uh, not, a, not a moment later. And we will then open them. And they're going to write sooner, though. And they'll, oh, yeah. Oh, sure. And then they will be distributed far and wide to everybody and their brother, including our friends Ashley Kelly, our friends Nestor and Dan, our friend um, Pierre Hahn in Dinsmore, Columbus, everybody will review them. And then they'll, uh, we'll, we'll look them over. But, uh, that'll be quick, a quick look. <laughs> Turn to page 403 where it says, Price. <laughs> Price. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, then, and then we'll all get back again at some future date and, and have recommendations from all of those people as to which ones they feel are the most qualified. So we're looking in July. Oh yeah, we're looking at uh, at least mid the second meeting in July. I don't think it's going to get that's going to get done for the uh, July. Second meeting? Yeah. The second, I don't know. So anyway, yeah. But um, 
But let, let's see, just one of the questions that, about the uh, specifications. Um, you said you had a pre-bid meeting. Is that well attended? Well, we'll, we'll get oh, to that okay. in just a second. I just, I'm working my way back. I'll just, uh, this question from the specifications is the question, in the window details, an aluminum extrusion is shown. Is the aluminum extrusion something that you have, or does a custom die need to be made? The answer is a custom die needs to be made. The intent is that the exterior face cap would be a custom extrusion at the head, jam and seal conditions on certain windows and doors. As detailed, the extrusion is not intended to be a separate piece attached to the exterior face cap. That's one of like a dozen of these, <laughs> of, these, uh, of, these of these of these clarifications. It's just amazing. And then there's well, that the boss. Yeah, and then there's more attachments about all the sanitary waste pipes, but it's just endless stuff. Um, that's a notice that says it went out. Uh, for the pre bid meeting, um, I, don't know if, I don't know if you saw this, Colin, but then he put together a, a nice um, summary of, of what happened that day. Uh, I don't know if you read it, but did you agree with, did you read this? Did you agree I with what he said? I skimmed it and I caught nothing that I disagreed with. I was present. Okay. I was unfortunately out of town, so I did not attend. Uh, Mark was predisposed, so Don was good enough to go. And uh, I have had a couple conversations with Dan about it and the change of the timing at the same time. And uh, he was encouraged that, you know, we'll have We'll have some quality bids come in. Um, obviously, doesn't have any idea what kind of money we're looking at in those quality bids. But, uh, but contractors who are he feels well capable of, of building the facility uh, it should be built. So that be good. Did you want to add anything, Don, about the, the meeting? No. Okay. No. I, uh, I did want to thank Colin for uh, the quality of care that I received when, uh, when I was picked up both times. Oh, good. Yeah. Very, very well. Did you want to see the agenda? Um, I think that's it. I think that's it for the entire house stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything more. So, we shall move to. Well, let's see. We we'll move to cemetery report. Um, <laughs> Not I, quiet over here. It is quiet. Mm -hmm. I can report that there was a burial on Saturday uh, at the National Burial um, Cemetery, and Brandon Morris conducted it. Uh, I have not seen Brandon, so I haven't asked him how it went. Have it on Saturday? Yes. Dan yeah, was already gone at that time, and that was already prearranged for, for Brandon to do it. Uh, I know there'll be another uh, burial in Clifton on, on Saturday, this coming Saturday, and Dan will be back for that. He said. So those are two things. Uh, I can tell you that he um, that there was a purchase of twelve grave sites at Clifton Cemetery by one family, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that worked, they said, that, I figured, the transaction like, went through. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I me met it. them here, and yeah, hmm. yeah. Well, that's I, you know, I got to take care of it, and she's got, she, they've got the deed now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was seventy-two hundred dollars. That's good. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that bounced up our yeah, the cemeteries <laughs> bottom line. <laughs> and the, the, the Clifton Union Cemetery Board Treasurer also reported that. We have been in receipt now of payment from Green Township uh, for 2017's uh, maintenance and fire protection and various and sundry other improvements that were already completed and paid for um, in the cemetery. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. Actually, yeah, I, I did um, get a, um, what the balance was on the uh, uh, cemetery board, uh, uh, the Cemetery's account right now, and it's about 28000 so. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Well, that large gravesite purchase is mm -hmm. that's twenty five percent of it right there. Pleased to know, Don, that your efforts have paid off handsomely. That they, for the first year, I think it's the first year, they actually paid for the 
the, the real, uh, you know, the, the real maintenance work that was done other than just mowing and burying. Well, I appreciate that you give me credit for that, but I don't get it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's just your presence. Mm -hmm. You've gotten you've gotten the blame if they if they have said I'm not paying you a dime for anything. <laughs> so you might as well take credit. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, uh, I don't know whether it's a question or a comment. I was thinking about cemeteries in general mm -hmm. and how. Much people end up valuing cemeteries for genealogy because those headstones endure much better than any other sort of record keeping. Right? They have much less chance of getting completely lost. And in and for example, in, with our natural burial, we reflected that in still having a monument that has names and, and dates, even though there aren't individual headstones. So that record's still being kept. And I wondered if there are people who choose not to inter any remains, but would still want to have a monument, but not buy a whole plot and put up a headstone, but that there could be some kind of, you know, service the cemetery provides. If you want to record your birth and date and, and name on a, on a granite tablet, then the, this, uh, the cemetery would, would do that for a reasonable fee, a nominal fee. Well, Richard, if you wouldn't spend all your life in Paris, you would know <laughs> that we do provide that service, and it has been used by, um, at the very least, two, two people to date. Where is it? It's the, it's the Memorial Scattering Garden. Uh, I think you're a... Okay, well, I know about, you know, if you are using those burial services, or scattering, or whatever, but suppose um, I give my body to science. There's no... Yeah, that's what we're there's doing. There's nothing. Yes, we are memorializing Just certain to, people okay. on, on request uh, who have actually not been scattered in the garden. Oh, okay. But they have paid the fee for a scattering, and they get their names engraved on the, on the granite monument, and their genealogical records in our database um, as if they were there. I see. Okay. That it already is. I didn't realize that it was an option if you weren't, I guess, or you're, 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 you're paying a scattering fee or not, or whether you're scattered or not, that's right. It's, that's it's not it. well known or um, <laughs> advertised as such. I, I don't know. Paying for the engraving, though, that's not cheap. Paying for the engraving on the yeah, well, they, they have, it, they have to pay the, the $550 that yeah. you would pay if you were scattered or not. I'm, you know, I'm not sure I'd want to see it turned into, you know, 99 names and there's only three actual ashes in there if it's a scattered. Well, I, I, I say, it's not something I thought through in detail, but just some different things that come up in conversation about, you know, and I, I'll say that myself. I have no intention of, of having a... A cemetery plot and a headstone, but on the other hand, I certainly enjoy wandering around reading other people's mm -hmm. headstones. Maybe I have a, you know, a social obligation. Yeah. Well, we're on the same page. I mean, that, that mm -hmm. is the reason that. I mean, initially the idea was, oh well, no, why, you wouldn't. Why would you know? Why would you want to stand on there if you're not actually scattered in there? Mm -hmm. And then, further thought and and discussion, especially with the person who wanted the. I mean, it's no secret that Chuck and Suzanne Clauser are memorialized on the granite line. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure it's been engraved yet. The engraving is way behind. But anyway, they will be. Yeah, they will be. And, but they're not actually there. But they're in our system, and they're there. So, and it's for that reason. Mm -hmm. the, the people who wanted to have that done wanted it for exactly the reason you're saying. So. Okay. Well, thank you. Any thoughts? No, that's great. I was not aware that that uh, service was available. Mm -hmm. but, uh, now I am. Okay, any further cemetery discussion? Let's move to Rogan Bridge.
I see no road and bridges. Um, I can report that we do have some roads and bridges. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, I can report that. We're trying to get some trolls to go under some of the bridges. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'll actually, do. do we have any full bridges under my town? <laughs> any bridge? No, we don't actually do the bridges. No, I mean, just checking. Well, yes, I we thought we did. We, well, the culverts. We do the uh, covered bridge. Yeah. I mean, it's in, within the town. It's, 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 yeah, we, don't, it's not a we don't take care of it. Of the township. No, there are no bridges in the state of Ohio that the townships are responsible for. It's all county okay. by, by mm -hmm. law. Yeah. But that's the only real life. Well, no. I think that back. We have the bridge over the little Miami. I guess if we sit here and think about it, we have. Oh, well, within Miami Township, we right. have some bridges. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, anyway, um, <coughs> a. Road tour of speed of roads showed that uh, a few of them are in desperate need of mowing. Uh, Snip, Houston, Larkins, Harrison, Kyle, North River, Tanyard, Bryan Park. Uh, other ones are in pretty good shape. Still some potholes on East Hyde Road. Um, so that was that. Uh, I have arranged. I've started. I've arranged to have both township um, vehicles serviced this week. Um, it's something that's long overdue on at least one of them, and a good idea for the other. So I've taken one to even, and when they're done with that one, they're going to come back and switch it to the other one. And so hopefully, we'll get both of those back. Our next were there any specific symptoms, no. or just mm -hmm. preventative maintenance? Number, number of miles, yeah. yeah. And which mm -hmm. has been unfortunately overlooked. Uh, I guess those vehicles are busy. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's what little road report I have for the evening. Anything else from the audience at large? So, and in that case, let's move to our fiscal officer for evenings. Uh, yeah, um, I had one resolution, and I realize now that, that I looked at it that I um, the, the the title is incorrect. It's just an amendment of a permanent appropriation, it's not and supplemental. So you can scratch it out, and I can make a, a correct copy. But I'll go ahead and read it. All right. Um, resolution two eighteen, twenty eighteen twenty two. Amendment of permanent appropriations, whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize the amendments to the following permanent appropriations. In the general fund, I increased the 1,110 599 other, which is basically miscellaneous cost, by $5,000 so that we could cut the check for the in support of the proposed possible maybe Yellow Springs Clifton connector. Mm -hmm. And um, and then in the capital fund, I um, increased or basically, uh, we hadn't had anything appropriated there before, but anyway, this is 4901, the capital fund, 99940, which is the line item that we will use money received from the levy to repay the um, the bond that we have with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So I increased that by $100,000 so we can start to, they're going to start taking money out of our checking account to get paid back. And that's next, what this next line item one covers. Be, next one will be in October. We had one in May. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it was yeah. teen, right? $3,300 or something. I think, it was, I think it was in the $4,000. I was it? seen the statement yet. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. So anyway, that's it. My mm -hmm. township trustees authorized the fiscal officer to do so. I've explained why. <laughs> uh, hearing an explanation, uh, is there a motion to adopt the resolution? Yeah. I would uh, move that we adopt the resolution. Okay, Mr. Uh, second. I'll have to second to the discussion regarding that resolution. Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Um, the only thing I had to report that's of any significance is that the state auditors have had to postpone or cancel their um, arrival here to do the audit for 
16, 17 for, because they keep having staffing issues. So they're supposed to be here today, mm -hmm. but canceled it Friday at 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, whatever, and they've canceled it again before that as well. Whatever. Are they auditing every year now? No, this is just a biannual. It's just like last, the last audit. Like so long. The last like audit, it's... they started okay. it in, I think, January or so of, was that 20? 15 and they didn't finish it until yeah. nearly six, 2016. It just took them all year. They had other priorities, regardless. It so, wasn't us. We weren't causing all the trouble. So, so just letting you know, the audit is coming up, but it has nothing for, to do with you guys. For the, for the good of the state, you might. The state mm -hmm. of my mind. <laughs> the state of Ohio. You might note mm -hmm. when you waited. And then canceled. When I waited, I and then waited. Well, you said you, you expected them, and then they. Oh well, yeah. Well, they yeah. Well, I mean, so they, where you actually spent some time or were inconvenienced, that could be noted, and there could be a hypothetical billing. They're costing local government by their not following through on the timing. Or I'm asking. Or are I, they? Costing? Or I could just have been happy. So, they didn't come <laughs> so, I mean, well, I understand what you're saying, and, I, and I'm and i fully aware of, you know, what In your case, maybe it's not a problem, but I can imagine some fiscal officers no, right. actually suffering because... <clears throat> yes, well, I, have, I had asked for the, um, they'll basically, when they're getting ready to come visit, they send ahead a list of all of, you know, the basic documents and everything they would need, so they can have it together mm -hmm. for them, and... Um, that wasn't. That was lost in the, the cloud or whatever. He didn't. He didn't. Wasn't able to notify me that I wasn't. That the, the first cancellation. Um, I didn't even know they canceled. It, 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 he told me he had. He had realized he hadn't notified me, and then and also the list was missing. And then he tried to send it again. I'm still not still not working on my computer, but maybe this computer here will work. But anyway. There, there, yeah, it's staffing that. issues for, for whatever reason, they're having a hard time, you know. In some worlds, someone would be billed for that. I'm not saying that we okay. should do that, I, that we can do that, I'm just yeah. noting that. Yeah, thanks. Well, Aren't they supposed to send a, a, a pre-audit contract for us and some disclosures and... Yeah, and, they and, and um, um, yeah, they needed to send something for me to sign so that they can look at our uh, investment accounts and um, waivers kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I just said, I yeah, they get that stuff. information directly from them. I haven't, I haven't gotten anything yet. Is this from Ahmet or is this from No, this is um, some local? No, no, he's a state boy. I mean, a state man. I'm sure he's a man. <laughs> <laughs> he's a grown up. No, they they are, they out, you might not be. are they operating out of Xenia or Columbus? Dayton, actually. Oh. Yeah. There used to be a Xenia office. Yeah, no, they usually come from Dayton. Yeah. So, anyway, bottom line is, it's coming. I know it's going to happen sometime soon. But, but they didn't cancel until 4 o'clock? On Friday. Mm -hmm. so Did they get the list of materials to you finally? Well, there was something, you did download something, you know, and there was attachment, but I can't get it to open up. And what I did open up, all it had was his, like, his name. And his, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't try again because... Because if he shows up thing. and and you don't have the materials, then no, it's it's you know it's the same materials every year, basically. Okay, you know, so you already not, know. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a clue. Sure, I've been through. I don't know how many months now, but anyway, that's it. All right, moving Thank on. You. Anything, anything else for the fiscal officer to see? Well, I I I wanted to go back to my comment that I felt was sort of derisively uh, flipped off. Yep. Your uh, comment about just Georgia. when we were, when we vote to pay bills, I just wanted the public to know we are doing it in the context of an existing budget, not just the course. Yes, I just was making that comment. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. We do look at the budget. Yes, we yes we can't do it. Or I do it. before I vote. Okay. Uh, anything else for me? No, you let us know a little later that you're not going to be here. Right. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, 
since I last saw you, I issued one permit for one tiny accessory structure. No, no big deal there. Um, we did have a, a zoning inspectors meeting at regional planning, um, mostly everybody sharing bits and pieces of information among each other, no particular topic. However, we learned, as some of you may already know, that a replacement for Ken LeBlanc has been found, and that transition will be occurring in July. Um, but it sounds like the, the ship is on a steady course at, at regional planning. Um, and then the other piece of, of business, and, and I say things have been relatively quiet, is I got a call I believe he's a civil engineer, but we just just talked by name on the on the phone. The man who's been engaged by Agraria to uh, recommend a design for a PUD to build about 12 residential units, and he was asking me about well, what are your PUD regulations? And I said, well, of course you can just read the code, but I'll also write you a summary since it's a little tricky to wade through some of that code and I put that together and he thanked me seriously and, and I don't know what will, else will happen with any of that. Um, but that is a possibility somewhere down the road or of it's being explored. The, in this, our PUD statute for residential PUDs basically says we don't give any density bonuses. So that right. if you're building 12 houses and you're going to have to have a PUD that's at least 36 acres big, mm -hmm. and actually it's 36 acres plus whatever dedicated public streets or roads, mm -hmm. and but you can't, 55% of that land has to be open space. So if you're a developer, you know, and you want to you're going to do that open space, and you're saying, oh, all the lots are going to be 45% of the normal size, or whatever. So it, it allows you to make smaller lots. It also allows you to vary the frontage. If you were going to build, you know, 12 houses, and you, you had to have 300 feet of frontage for each house, you were going to have to build at least 1,800 feet of, of street if the houses were, you know, on both sides. Whereas in this situation, you can have as little frontage as, as is practical. But, again, in a situation like this, your, your lot size is still going to have to reflect what um, the health department says you've got to have in the way of, of reach field for the particular site. Yeah. Anyway, so I gave him all those basic concepts to work with and a few other details. So we'll see what happens. Did, did he indicate what road this will be off of? Well, they, he, he said his instructions were to look at the northwest corner of the property, which means it would have to be off Dayton Yellow Springs. There, there is an access off, off Houston Road, which would be a whole lot easier from a traffic standpoint, but it's, that's in the very southwest corner of the property. And um, no, I, I did mention that, but I said, you know, if if we were talking about 12 houses in the street that came out on Houston Road, then it probably wouldn't be any big deal. But if you're going to make a new intersection on Dayton Yellow Springs, mm -hmm. you're going to be talking to the county engineer, not, not to me, or the zoning commission or anybody else, uh, trustees. And that could add a level of complexity to the whole situation. But that I don't, I think that he gave me the impression that his charge was was not very specific, um, and he was trying to figure out, and that's part of our process. How much detail did he have to go into to get the process going? And, and the fact is, most of it. <laughs> um, there's, there's very little. I mean, you can consult all you want, but if you want actual, can I do this? You've got to have the whole package. We'll see how that goes. You bet. Yeah. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Thank you. Anything else for Richard? Um, no. 
did you have a good time in frame? Part of the full time. <laughs> as, as well as you do. Um, <laughs> no, uh, uh, as I tell everybody, it sounds so exotic, you know, going on a vacation to France, and, and I certainly enjoy it, but, but it's more of a family vacation, and it's spending time with my family. I'm not a, being a tourist and, and sightseeing and, and whatever. Not that we don't occasionally do one thing or another that might fall into that category, mm -hmm. but it's a lot more like, you know, any grandparent going and seeing their grandkids. It's a daily grind. It's a daily grind. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, uh, so what is this? this is the first meeting, so we're good there. So, I'm sorry, is it old first? No, it's new business. New business. I have one piece of new business. Um, we received a uh, an email from uh, Lou Agresta. I never forget that guy's name. But anyway, he's the uh, he kind of runs the. Um, District 11 Integrating Committee of Springfield, that's where it's headed. This is the committee that distributes uh, OPWC funds from the state of Ohio to uh, all the different jurisdictions on a competitive basis <coughs> in the four, I think it's four county area, but um, <coughs> ours, uh, ours are pretty much just Clark and Greene County, I think, our District 11. I, I served on them for five years, but it's been a long time and I don't remember exactly which jurisdictions they were. Be that as it may, uh, he says that uh, we received an email on April 13th about township rep representation on the committee. The deadline to nominate was Friday, May 11th. During the nomination process, we received four nominations for three vacant spots. Ed Huff Jr. from Dark County, Scott Miller from Green County received several nominations and they will serve another term. Tim Foley from uh, Springfield Township and Deb Wallace from Beaver Creek Township each received one nomination. Break the tie between Deb and Tim, we'll have a runoff vote. If your township has not already nominated someone and would like to cast a vote for either candidate, please email me a co copy of a township resolution. <coughs> so runoff votes will be accepted until Friday the 29th. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, so I thought about that. And I recommend that we. Uh, pass a resolution in favor of Tim Foley as the, as the OPWC member, and the reasoning behind that is basically, and it says so in the resolution, but basically that um, <clears throat> we try and get this membership to be as equitably represent representative of the District 11 members, and uh, currently there's a member from Dark County, there's a member from, um, oh, excuse me, Two, or a member from Green County, and, um, and, and one open seat at this point, and the open seat is from another township trustee from Green County and a township trustee from Clark County. And it just seems to be the most equitable way of doing that is to not have two members of the committee uh, from Green County, especially two fairly decent sized townships and uh, all, all, almost almost next to each other. It just doesn't seem to be you know, as equally representative of, of all the District 11 jurisdictions. Therefore, it's my recommendation that we nominate the, uh, the township trustee from Springfield Township. His name again is? Tim Foley. Would you entertain a motion? Uh, you want to keep talking? I can, uh, I can uh, stop at your pleasure. <laughs> I would move that we uh, recommend Tim Foley. Oh. Be Ask your fiscal officer what resolution number is going to be. 24. Four. Okay. Four. There we go. <clears throat> as far as numbers of votes goes, we have one vote. In this particular instance, yes. Okay. We have one vote. Normally, what happens is the Green County Township Association nominates a member of the association to be the representative to OPWC. That's how it was when I was on the board. 
and that's how it was when I resigned and Scott Miller took over for mine. That was it was done as a recommendation through the association. Okay. This is a little bit different. I've never I haven't run across this before mm -hmm. where they have a vacancy and they have a tie, mm -hmm. you know, for for a nomination. So we have a motion. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that motion. Second any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Puckett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. When, what's I that? will email this to uh, okay. Mr. Agresta. Sign it, and that's yeah. going to serve as the original. And okay. our, our then you go ahead and send it. Okay, any further new business this evening? Chris, I don't know if, again, exactly where this fits in the agenda, and, and it may be something that you all have, are aware of or talked about, but one of the things that I noted in the last couple of OTA legislative alerts is this legislation that's going through committee to uh, force municipalities to provide water and sewer at n normal rates to township residents. Hmm. And I thought, you know, I mean, one, that would make Yellow Springs have to change its laws because it currently, you know, charges right. a, a charge. Sure. Sir. But it would also, it also, in a sense, flies against what our land use plan said, which is if you want to develop, develop next to the municipalities where the, you know, in other words, be part of the municipalities. You can have the high density development and not spot all over the township and it kind of makes it suddenly a whole lot easier for people to not annex their property but you know <laughs> try to take advantage of being in the township and being in the village at the same time you're 100 percent right but keep in mind we've got a zoning code that you know has about five districts that all include you know right well the same thing is there's sewer and water available right. it suddenly needs a higher density anyway this is this is certainly business that will that i will bring up to the Zoning Commission on, on Tuesday, but I thought it was kind of of general interest as, as well. Yeah, I'm glad you pointed that out. Was, the, was this, I did, I just read. The latest OTA legislative order, how recently did you see this? Well, it was, I know it was in the previous one to this mm -hmm. one. Um, I can, uh, I think maybe I'd still say that, I can... Because I can see a basis for a suit by the Ohio Municipal Association or somebody yeah. else. I, you know, as I say, all I'm saying is, you know, they just say, oh, such and such is in committee, you know, and, yeah. and like, I'm not about to go up and testify or something, but I don't know, you know, who, I mean, it, it also says who sponsored it, but I don't know why, you know, what the, the underlying reason is for the... Legislation. I will look for that. I'm glad you mentioned it. Okay, any other new business? Any old business? I have a few things I'd like to follow up for old business. Um, the Clifton Connector um, is having a, another meeting on June 18th, and we also have uh, have issued a check for five thousand dollars for our commitment from the resolution that we passed in the last meeting. I guess it was the meeting before. Mm -hmm. right. uh, in support of that, uh, I, I put a little note on it. Hopefully, will you when you send it over to the village, will you include a copy of the resolution and make it oh. to the attention of Brian House? Brian, sure. Mm -hmm. I would appreciate Easy that. Easy press. <laughs> Right now, yeah, the council president, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And as long as we're on sending copies and things, there's two or three checks that you personally didn't sign, so just when you're going through the, and I, I put little yes, marks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 so of course, I'll, I'll fix that. All right. Um, well, I guess, did you, yeah, are you making progress in the updating the personal policies manual? Uh, or I'm sorry, the zoning code. Uh, that, that we need to do also. But uh, I, I, have, I have 
not substantive progress. I have hit technical, uh, you know, how to match the typology, and uh, I'm working on it. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect because eventually that whole thing is going to be redone because the zoning commission is hard typography, at work. Typography, not typology. Uh, hard at work, I'm revising it, okay. updating it. Um, uh, any uh, progress with bringing high speed internet to the township? Uh, no, other than I'm a, I've become aware that there is some state money possibly. Yeah, there's, there's some broadband funding. But that I, no, I have not significantly. But I did you make contact with that gentleman who had, whose name is No, I have not. Okay. Um, I, I have talked to others in the in the Mbeka mm -hmm. talk, and, and they've not been encouraging about. Mm -hmm direct work with uh, the uh, current dominant provider, but so I, I'm not, <laughs> I've done a little bit, but no, no conclusions. Any thoughts on potential recruits for, for a zoning commission alternate or BZA member? Talk to one person, no, nothing specific. Oh, me, did, did Joe Staggs resign? Yes. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have any old business? Hearing none, I entertain a motion to adjourn. I shall move. Moved and passed by acclamation as usual. Mm -hmm. Thank you one more. Thank See you. you on uh... I'm going to have an applause meter like Queen for a day. Besides the applause.